<clears throat> thank you, Honorable Speaker. And allow me, Honorable Speaker, first to thank the, our Chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and uh, the members of our Budget and Appropriations Committee, all our chairs for the very good work that they have done over the working recess. You realize, Honorable Speaker, as some of us had time to retreat to our constituencies. Many of our departmental committee members, their chairs, and those members of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and the Finance Committee have had a very busy working recess as they considered both the supplementary budget and the annual estimates and the ongoing finance bill engagements over the recess period. And I take this opportunity to thank them for the great work that they have done. And Honorable Speaker, as I second, I want to reemphasize the need, Honorable Speaker, for the National Treasury to ensure that these supplementary budgets, as we have emphasized before, and the Honorable John Buddy, who is here and is a ranking member of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, will tell you that over the years, this House has called on the National Treasury to limit supplementary budgets to at least one supplementary budget within a financial year. So that whatever you plan from your BPS right to the annual estimates, you will only revise it once. Otherwise, the business of having to do budgetary revisions twice, thrice in a year is not very good. Uh, budgetary uh, practice, and it speaks volumes to the level of preparedness that we uh, have when we are preparing our budgets, Honorable Speaker, and also, in a way, creates uncertainty with the implementing agencies in government as to whether you will have adequate resources to implement all the programs that have been uh, budgeted for you within a certain financial year, Honorable Speaker, since you do not know whether that money is subject to review. And appreciating, Honorable Speaker, the challenges that we've had with liquidity, uh, or rather with the raising of revenues in the country, it is only fair that the National Treasury and those who are planning do so with a lot of prudence to ensure that the revenues we project are as realistic as possible, as close to what the reality is as possible, Honorable Speaker. And uh, we must also take this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to call on the Kenya Revenue Authority to pull up their socks, Honorable Speaker, to make sure that we are collecting adequate revenues to ensure that we do not keep revising our budgets through <clears throat> these supplementary budgets. Honorable Speaker, let me also note uh, some good progress. Uh, as members will note, we have spoken, Honorable Speaker, at length about how we budget our how transparent our budgeting process is. And I must commend the Budget and Appropriations Committee because this time round, they have been very transparent in attaching the schedule. Uh, Honorable Speaker, the schedules that you members will find attached from page, uh, page 757, or rather the uh, first, all the way from the first to the fourth schedule, Honorable Speaker, including the changes that have been made and Honorable Speaker, this is very good because it allows members to interrogate what are the changes that have been made by the Budget and Appropriations Committee so that we avoid the temptation that I've always seen over the years to blame the Budget and Appropriations Committee members that they have reallocated money from here to there without the knowledge of the House. I have seen also members accusing each other Honorable Speaker, because I have been part of those members who have been on the receiving end. I saw the member for Yata the other day, ignorantly speaking on TV, saying how much money that was allocated to Kiambu County and was all diverted to Kikonswensi. And I wondered, this is a member who sits in this house, budgets, appropriates, is always in this house. Where was he when that money was being reallocated? Because it is not possible for one member of this house to reallocate resources from one or the other constituency to another. It is not possible. These changes are usually in these schedules, and that's why I thank the Chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee because of the disclosures that you are making so that even as we speak on TV stations, let us not be, appear on TV to exhibit our ignorance of the budgeting process. And it's good that every new parliament, members of parliament, are taken through the budgeting process of the House. And I think the sh the, the, from the schedules I was looking at the, at the induction of this House, we had at least three and a half hours an induction program. And I want to encourage the Chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, please keep educating members. 
even as you speak to them, as you engage with them, even through the committees, on how the budgeting process is done, Honorable Speaker. Uh, so that even as we speak out there, we speak from a point of knowledge and not just speak because we, have, we, are, we are riding on things that are circulated on social media or what you think uh, will give you popularity in your village by mentioning other people's names. As I saw the member for Hata mentioning my name on TV. And I forgave him because I knew he has, he has to mention my name to look relevant to his people. Anyway, Honorable Speaker, moving on from these schedules, there are a number of uh, changes, Honorable Speaker, that are critical as the uh, Chair of the Budget and Appropriations Committee has mentioned. Issues touching on Article 223, again, Honorable Speaker, we did indicate that Article 223, and it has been the, uh, the, the position of this House, Article 223 is only to be used in cases of uh, emergency nature. Honorable Speaker, 223 is not to be used to allocate money to the office of the leader of majority for tea, because that is not an emergency. But the emergency that has, we have faced as a country with the flooding, it is good, Honorable Speaker, that we are seeing more resources going towards mitigation of the, the issues that came with flooding, uh, right from the monies that are being paid to people who are being moved from uh, uh, riparian uh, reserves, uh, within the city and in other areas where people have been asked to move away from rivers and areas where they are prone to flooding and other dangers, Honorable Speaker. And money has been put to ensure uh, that these people are well compensated. I am glad and I must thank the Ministry of Interior that for the first time, even as we've seen houses being demolished in Nairobi, all the people who are living in those houses, Honorable Speaker, and I did see a statement from the Ministry of Interior confirming that they have compensated those people to ensure that they are able to relocate and move away from areas that would subject them to dangers of flooding and uh, all the issues we see with climate change, Honorable Speaker. And this is the way to go, so that you do not just tell people move out and they do not know where to go to. And the small stipend of 10,000 shillings that these people are receiving is helping them to be able to move to new houses, uh, most of them because are tenants. And also, let me take this opportunity, Honorable Speaker, to appeal to all our private developers, please, you do know the riparian reserves are 30 meters from where the river is. Please let us not encroach on our river, rivers and the riparian reserves because when these demolitions come, you also lose, as much as many of them may have uh, uh, been warned before. Uh, and I pray that the Ministry of Interior, uh, and I, uh, I was asking the Chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee, but he has promised within the next budgeting cycle they will allocate monies to also ensure that the areas they are demolishing houses are not re-encroached again, so that they are fenced off, they plant trees, and those areas remain riparian reserves. Because as we have been told, we will receive higher than normal rainfall over the next seven years. And therefore, the, 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 some of these measures are indeed to guard against uh, some of the dangers that we we'll see. Honorable Speaker, I have also seen changes, Honorable Speaker, in the State Department for higher education. And I have a particular concern, Honorable Speaker, if you go, Honorable Speaker, to the schedules, a change of uh, 250 million that is going to the Open University uh, on recurrent expenditure, and that, I have been informed, is very well justified. But there is also an increase of 250 million shillings of GOK sponsorships to students in private universities. This, Honorable Speaker, I completely disagree with, and uh, we, sh we should be engaging. I was just engaging with the chair of the Education Committee to see indication, because remember, we have changed the funding model of uh, university uh, students and how they are sponsored through uh, government. There was an increase in the annual estimates of 150 million, which was reasonable, considered by the Education Committee, and uh, agreed on by the Education Committee, and I see the Budget and Appropriations Committee has had another increment of 250 to total uh, uh, 400 million, and therefore we'll be engaging with the Chair and the Chair of Education so that tomorrow as we move to supply, we can make the requisite changes, Honorable Speaker. Considering, Honorable Speaker, that many of our public universities are in dire need, whether it is Bondo University,